Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. An original radio play inspired by the life of John Sutter and the California Gold Rush. Starring Edwin Jerome in the role of John Sutter. The DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, present the Cavalcade of America. Dedicated to those men and women in every walk of life who have shaped the destiny of America in the past, and to the youth of today, who will shape the destiny of America in the future. Before proceeding with our cavalcade play, we pause for a moment to bring you an urgent message from the American Red Cross. Money is needed now to buy food, clothing, and medical supplies for suffering people in war-torn Europe. Americans have never failed to answer cries of distress from far-off lands. And we cannot fail now in this sad hour. Send your contribution to your local Red Cross chapter or to the American Red Cross in Washington, D.C. California in the year 1839. California under Mexican sovereignty. Purple Valley, missions, ranchos, and haciendas. At Monterey, His Excellency the Governor Juan Bautista Alvarado has arrived at his capital on the Pacific. Striding across the courtyard, his cloak billowing from his shoulders like a vermilion cloud, he is surrounded by clamoring, excited settlers of the valley. Governor, the cattle plague is in the valley again. Governor, what do we do? The cattle are dying. Tell us, Excellency. We'll have to leave the valley. And at the end of the ranchos, we'll have to return to Mexico again. Same story. All the way up the valley, I hear it. Sick cattle, whole herds dying. Plague, starvation. But what can I do? But we don't want to go back. Show us how to cure the cattle. Please, Excellency. Please, Excellency. Please, please. One moment. One moment, all of you. You have your ways of curing stock of the plague. Try it. Make it cure them. We have tried, but it does no good. I'm no farmer. I don't know how. Why do you come here to me? You are the excellency, the governor. You've got to help us. I would if I could. You all know that. There must be some way. There must be someone who can rid our cattle of this plague. If there is, I'll offer 50,000 pesos. 50,000. Excellency. See, Senor Horta. Excellency, I have heard of a man curing one heifer... It was on my rancho. Well, who was this man? Why haven't you brought him here? He left. Where he is now, I do not know, Excellency. He must be found. What was his name, Senor? He was Swiss, Excellency. He was Sutter. John Sutter. So you are the remarkable Captain John Sutter, eh? That is my name, Your Excellency. But why remarkable? Remarkable enough, senor. I have heard you can cure our valley cattle of this plague. All of your herds in California can be cured as easily, Your Excellency. There is a remedy I learned in Switzerland. We care for our stock as if they were members of our family. Mm, so? Well, Captain Sutter, I will give you 50,000 pesos if you rid us of this cattle plague. I shall pay you in gold. I am sorry, Your Excellency. I am not interested in gold. But you must be mad, senor. All men want gold. Your Excellency, what good is gold? Can you feed it to starving people? Can you cure sick cattle with it? Captain Sutter, you are a strange man. You mean you do not want wealth? Certainly I want wealth. I did not endure three years of hardship getting to California to acquire the gold that destroys men. That is not what I promised my wife, Anna. And when I send to Switzerland for her to come to me, I want to show her real wealth. And real wealth is land. Very well. You cure the cattle. The land is yours. But as far as the far hills there, as you know, it is already taken up. But I want this far beyond the hills. The valley of the Sacramento. What part of it do you want, Captain Sutter? I want all of it. The entire Sacramento Valley? All, east and west. From one mountain range to the other. But what you ask, Captain, is equal to half of France. And your little Switzerland could be tucked into one corner of it. That is why I wanted your excellency... You say you do not understand me. Perhaps you would if you had grown up in Switzerland. Crowded little farm. Always I dreamed and told Anna of a place like this. Like the Sacramento Valley. With vast plains and fertile land. Now I understand a little, yes. But still it is much land, you ask. Perhaps it is too much for my people to understand. Your people have been here for years and have not dared to set foot on it. They will never develop it. I will. But can you? If I don't? You can have it back. Give me a professional grant. If I make good what I promise, the land is mine. Captain Sutter, 
few readers of this play, and you will have the chance to develop the whole Valley of the Sacramento. If you succeed, you hold it. That is the bargain. Salute, Captain Sutton. Salute, Your Excellency. <laughs> Where is it, boys? Right here, Captain. Ah. Uh, he's a mighty fine calf, Captain. Oh. Yeah, mother and child both doing fine. Yeah, yeah, it is a mighty fine calf. And fit. <laughs> the captain's so proud of you, Bessie. He can't talk. <laughs> Bessie's looking like she's got something to be proud of, too. She ought to. Bessie, you've just had the first calf born at Fort Sutter. <laughs> That's right, Billy. Oh, she's oh, oh, right. Uh, some other time, Emily. The captain's busy right oh, now. But, Joe, we've got something oh. to ask him. we uh, just got to know. Uh, what is it? Uh, speak up. What is it, please? Uh, go on, Emmy. You ask him. No, you're the one to ask him, Jeff. Well, on, well, Jeff. well, you were marrying us when they told you about Bessie. Oh, oh yes, I was marrying you, wasn't I? Um, where was I? Oh yes, I didn't quite finish. Uh, Jeff Clark, uh, Emily Taylor. I now pronounce you man and wife. Oh, oh she is. Oh, thank, thank you, you Captain. Captain. Goodbye. Goodbye. She, she must have a name. Well, who do you mean, Captain? The calf, Joe. The calf. First thing born on my land. The first of the herd that will cover these hills. <laughs> like a first seed that grows and multiplies, for it has greatness in it a thousand fold. <laughs> yeah, Joe. It is the beginning of everything, like in the first book of the Bible. Well, little one, I am going to name you Genesis. That's for Genesis. He begins. Farm. Oh, we, we have been on my farm for miles and miles, Laura. But we do not call it a farm here. We call it a rancho. And mine is the biggest rancho of all. And what do you think of it, Anna, darling? I, I do not know what to think, Johan. Oh? It is so big and everything. Oh, even you seem new to me. Oh, now, Anna, darling, I have not changed so much. I was always like this. Only in Switzerland I could not do the great things I have done and the greater things I will do here. You will get used to it. Morning, Captain Sutter. Oh, morning, Captain. Morning, uh, Bill. Go. Uh, four boys, four. Uh, yes. Put 50 men to work at the mill. See that the grain is all ground before the crops come down from Feather River. Yes, sir. And, uh, Bill. Yes, Captain. Marshall has sent down lumber from the new tannery. You put your men to work there. There's a new bunch of settlers showed up down the valley, Captain. Good. They need a hundred more up in the South Orchard. The next group can go to the vineyard. All right, we'll put them all to work, right, Captain. Oh. Goodbye, Captain. Come, come, boys. Get up. Who were all those men, Johan? Oh, some of my foremen on the darling. I have many others. For all the thousands and thousands of acres of wheat and grapes and timber, I need them all. And will they get all the people you just ordered? They must get the manor, for I must work every acre to hold it. And settlers are coming every week from all the 29 United States to live under me, Captain Khan Sutter. Somehow this... It frightens me, Johan. It's nothing to be frightened of, Anna. You're almost like a king, Father, or an emperor. Yes. Yes, I am, my child. Of a land bigger than all Switzerland. As big as half a France. You see, from the mountains there to the others yonder, and as far as you can see between it, it's all mine. Who? Who, boy? Here we are. Here's Fort Sutter. A fort? Why must you live in a fort? Why? Because I am the chief of all the government of the frontier, of the Rio del Sacramento. Oh, it's not much like Switzerland, is it, Anna, darling? No. No, Johan. Everything is different. Even my Johan. <laughs> you forget all your worries, Anna, darling. I, the king, command it. For tonight, I give a Spanish fiesta in your honor. please. May I have everyone's attention, please? I propose a toast to our distinguished guest, His Excellency, the Governor of California. I thank you, Captain Sutter. I shall respond with a toast to the great man who more than fulfilled his agreement with Governor Alvarado, and rightfully is entitled to his newer grant. For he has changed the wilderness to a paradise, and has colonized it with many people, 
A toast to Captain Sutter, the owner, free and clear, of all the lands in the Sacramento Valley. <laughs> Come, Mama, darling. Let me show you the plans I have made for a house. But you, Henry, have a house already. I like it. Don't it do? This fort. This is not a house. We must have a mansion. And I have the plan for it. Yeah. It shall be a house fine enough for John Sutter and his family. But you understand you have a truly a palace. Of course it is. Yeah, you see? Here is the reception hall. Here is the drawing room. And here, my audience chamber. I shall hold court as required by my official authority. Yes. It will be very nice, I'm sure, if it is not too expensive. Oh, but what do I care for expense? My crops this year will pay off the last of my debt. But let us be careful, Johan. It is so big here in America. I'm afraid it must all come down on my head. Oh, now, Anna, darling, the land is ours. They can't take it from us. But all right. All right, if you say so, Johan. But promise me one thing. Please build me a little house. Only a few rooms if need be, Johan, but maybe we can go there sometime. Well, perhaps. There is a little farm on Feather River. I might build you a little house there if you insist. Now I would be happy, Johan, because someday we may be glad we have such a little farm and a little house. <laughs> What are you doing here, Marshal? I ordered you to stay at the new mill till it was finished. The mill? I got something better than a mill for you, Captain. I told you, Marshal, the new mill must be finished as soon as here. possible. Here's why I'm here, Captain. What is it? What have you in the bag? See for yourself what it is. It's gold. Gold? Gold? No. No, not gold. Sure. Sure it is. Gold. Pure gold. Where did you get it, Marshal? Oh, along the bank of the American River, right at the mill. At the mill? Yeah, the stream's lined with it. You can pick it up with your hands. Have you told anyone? Oh, not a soul. You must tell no one. Oh, I won't, Captain. But they see us taking it out. We are not taking it out, Mark. What? Are you crazy? I would be crazy if I let word of this around. I would not have a workman left at the mill. I have too much invested there. But there's enough gold there to buy ten mills. And enough gold to lose everything I have put in here in the valley, Marshal. I've got to finish this harvest. Everything depends on it. Go back to the mill, Marshal. Forget you ever found it. And forget a fortune. A fortune under my feet and not even lean over to pick it up. Oh, no. I'm going back there and pick up a million dollars. Then I'm going to spend it and go back for more and spend that. The rest of my life, I'll dig and spend. Dig and spend. Yeah, that's it. Why, well, be crazy not to. Marshall. What, huh? That's what gold does to you. That's what would happen to all of us. We would all get just like you are now. Praise the gold. It is a fever, Marshal. You have got to forget Oh, no. I don't know, Captain. A fortune. Listen. Have I not always treated you fair? Yes, yeah, sure. Sure you have, Captain. Then go back to the mill and do as I say. You never tell anybody? You mean... Nobody outside of you, huh? Listen, the gold will stay there. It always has. I hope it always will. You're wrong, Captain Sutter. You can't hide gold for long. No, I haven't got time for another one, boys. Gotta get back to the mill. Captain Sutter wants lumber. Oh, yeah, lumber can wait, John. It's a long drive back. Ah, uh, but it's a long drive that has no turning, they say. Your booth need another drink. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, same thing, Sid. Let's have one for the Scotty, too, huh? All right. All in the house, boys. <laughs> that suits the Scotchman, huh? Hey, that do, that do. Especially when the wee whistle is rusted. There's nothing like a hard ride to do that, eh, Marshal? Well... Maybe I won't be making that long ride much longer. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. You ain't got to quit the sawmill, are you, Marshal? Quit that sawmill? <laughs> I should say not. You hey, better let me pay for the next one, Marshal. You haven't much money. What do you mean, I haven't any money? Your purse was empty, I saw it. <laughs> Trust the Scotchman to notice that. Sure, it's empty. But I always keep a reserve. Well, if you believe he's got a reserve, Sid, <laughs> set us up again. All right. What do you think this is? A lot of rocks, I'd say. A lot of rocks, huh? I guess you guys don't know gold when you see it. Gold? That's what I said, partner. That's pure gold. 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 
Yeah, heard it over the saloon oh. yesterday. They discovered gold of a tunnel. Come on, let's get over there and take out a claim. No, no, you can't come on my land. It is mine. You have no right. No right. California, eh? Pick up the move. Come on, let's go. California, eh? No, no, my land. All of it. All mine. Not yours. We didn't want to go over the mountains, they be saying California, eh? Well, take the lane. Just follow the sunset. Way out to the west. It's mine. Keep out. Stay away from here. Sure, I'm going. We're all heading to California. Uh, think of it, Molly. Halfway there. Uh, you better get out those chairs ready for all the gold and kingdom to Come on, tell the others. Wait, no, no, it is mine. You can't take it from me. Not my land. Yeah, you heard me. When is the next boat leave for California? Eh? That's what I said, California. Eh? No, no, all of you. Get out of here. Get off my land. And the eight people say so. Who will not tell us off here? Sure, everybody's following the dream over the world of California. You can't, take everybody. It. you can't take it away from me. My land. Mine, I tell you. All right, folks. Here we are. Here's California. Eh? Over there, Southern Fork. Let's come on. Let's move right in. Get it through. Oh, no. Stay out. Keep out of here. You're taking my land. You can't. It's mine. Johann. Like a swarm of locusts, Anna. Nothing left but stubble now. I know, Johann, but we've still got our little farm. We can go there and be happy. Happy? No, Anna. I have still got fight in me. I won't be happy until I get it back. All of my land back. But how, Johann? There is a way. I am not licked. Not yet, Anna. Captain Sutter. Sam Vernon. How do you, Sam? What are you going to do now, Captain? I am going to get my land back. Every acre of it. I am set on filing suit in the United States court under my original claim. Well, that's the whole northern half of the state. Captain, if you proceed with this suit, there'll be trouble among the settlers. And it will end only in trouble, Johann. Please, please don't do it. Anna, every ounce of gold in this bonanza belongs to me. And I will make them pay me back every cent. But you've always despised gold. Why do you not... Say... Gold can be used to restore these lands. And that is the only reason I want it. Well, Captain, there's one thing certain... Win or lose, this is going to be the biggest lawsuit in the whole history of the world. You know what, Hank? The fellow Sutter says he's going to get all that land in the Sacramento back. Going to court about it. You mean he thinks he can drive us off our farm? That's what? Why, he's crazy. Crazier than that yonder mare of mine. Come on, get up. Did you ever hear the like, Sarah? That great goat of a sutter trying to say we're on his land. They ought to pin him up where he belongs. Tie his whiskers to the gate for him. Yeah, that's what the crowd's doing over at the courthouse. Big Mouth Sutter's trying to get back our farm. Says it's been his land all the time. Yeah, Big Mouth. That's more than you can say for his wits. The judge will fix him, I tell you. The court finds that Captain John Sutter did in fact hold the prior title to these lands in suit, and therefore he is entitled to full restoration of all his property and absolute title thereto. Hank. Yeah? Sheriff's come to drive us off. Get the boys together. We'll meet tonight down to Sutter's Fort. Your picks, men. Yeah, sure. We're ready. As soon as the rest get here, let's go. We got enough now. Come on. No. Listen. Everybody's gonna be in on this. Where we're heading for ain't gonna move away anyhow. All right, men. You ready? Yeah. Come on. What we're we waiting for? We'll get that Sutter Coyote tonight, boys. Let's go. Johan. Johan, wake up. Huh? Johan. What is the trouble, Anna? Listen. Huh? Listen. What can that be? I'm afraid, Johan. Mother. Mother, what's the matter? No, 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 Laura. Don't be afraid. You see, Anna, it's only some of the squatters being driven off by the sheriff. But they're coming here to the fort. What? Burn it down, boys. What is that? Come quickly, Johan. Out the back way. John, should I run from that place, Bob, Anna? No, I would stay. No, this is one kind of listen to me, Johan. It won't do any good to stay or even to try to stop them. Just get this way, quick. Laura. Yes, Mother. I'm right here, Mother. 
All right, Anna. We will go. Quick, out this way. Yes. No, no, hurry. No time to lose. Come, come this way. She can cross the fields back here. Oh, here, here. I will help you. Here. Oh, Johan, they're burning the house. Here, here, behind the shed. We will stay here for a while. Johan, our home, everything. Ruins. My land in ruins. Now our mansion burned before it was finished even. Oh, we do not need such a big house. We have the little farm. It is enough. All my work destroyed. Everything in action. Oh, Johan, my poor Johan. All because of the gold. It drives them mad, just as I said. Gold, gold, gold. Johan, don't. They have taken Johan. from me, but it's mine. It is all because of their greed. Their greed for gold. But I will come back. The law says this land is mine. Mine, it's going to be. Good morning, Mr. Brannan. Morning, Laura. Mother and father home? Mother's inside, Mr. Brannan. And I think I see father. Father? Father, Mr. Brannan! All right, Laura. Is anything the matter, Mr. Brannan? Just a little business to talk over with the captain man. It'll keep. Good day, Sam. What is the news? I've had a wire from Washington, Captain. Oh. Well, if it was good news, Sam, you would have a happier look than you have. It must be bad. About the appeal of the settlers to the Supreme Court. They reversed the judgment of the lower court that upheld your title to these lands. I'm afraid this Feather River Farm is about all you have left, Captain. Oh. Maybe, maybe this just as well, Sam. Maybe this is enough, even. But, Johan... Well, nothing else to say, Captain. I'll be going. Goodbye, Sam. You're always welcome here. Thank you, Captain. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Anna, maybe you are right. This farm here. Enough for us yet. Just as my Anna always said. Hey, Anna. Johan, the other land. They're all gone now. You don't mind that, Johan? It was here long before I came, Anna. It will be here long after I am gone. I have been riding these days over the little farm, and I have been thinking a few things out. Maybe I expected this today, Anna. Why, Johan? Yeah. I was greedy, Anna. Not for gold, no. But for power and land. Power and gold, they don't matter. It is the land that matters. The land and its people. Yes. The people who will fill these valleys with little farms like ours. People with their crops and their orchards, their homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will be the ones who will make California greater than I could. Or any one man. And so John Sutter and those heroic pioneers of California take their honored place in the cavalcade of America. <laughs> Thank you, Edwin Jerome. And now our story from the wonder world of chemistry. In California, as everywhere, they found that real wealth was not gold but the hard-working, earnest people who settled there. People, and the useful products that people produce. What painstaking hands and creative minds can do with nature's raw materials is well shown by something that Columbus found on his second voyage to the New World. He saw natives playing games with bouncing balls that were made from the sap of trees. Those bouncing balls were rubber, but not rubber as you know it. For the stuff that goes to make the many modern rubber products you use is much more than raw rubber out of a tree. Often, a dozen or more other materials are added to raw rubber to make a compound suitable for your tires, your hot water bottle, your garden hose, or whatnot. Down a list longer than your arm. This list is so long, in fact, that one company alone is said to make well over 32,000 rubber products. Almost every important use of rubber was predicted by a smart Connecticut Yankee 100 years ago when rubber was little more than a curiosity. Needless to say, he didn't have automobile tires on his list. But he did suggest rubber tires for wheelbarrows. That Connecticut Yankee, Charles Goodyear, did a lot more than imagine ways of using rubber. He made the wide use of rubber possible by a great discovery, vulcanization. In the early 1800s, a factory was started in Massachusetts to make rubber clothing and shoes, life preservers, and wagon covers. They weren't much good. In hot weather, they melted and got sticky. 
and in cold weather, they cracked. Today, DuPont produces many chemicals which have aided chemists of the rubber industry in improving the quality of rubber products. Some of these chemicals give rubber the right consistency for manufacture. Others aid vulcanization. And still another group give greater resistance to the destructive forces of oxygen and sunlight and to cracking caused by constant bending. But in addition to helping improve products made of natural rubber, DuPont has created a new kind of rubber called neoprene. Products made of this man-made material serve industry where other products fail. In the development of neoprene, chemists have forged another link in the chain making America secure within her continent. For here is a material that must be counted among the items for national defense. Neoprene is another remarkable expression of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now the Cavalcade of America's historian, Dr. Frank Monahan of Yale University. Next week, Cavalcade presents a musical tribute to America's beloved delight opera composer, Victor Herbert, whose charming melodies have woven a spell of joy and beauty into the fabric of an American era, gone but never to be forgotten. It was Dean Taylor who summed up his musical genius when he said, Victor Herbert never wrote a vulgar line of music. For his contribution to the happiness and spirit of Americans in his day and in ours, our next broadcast of Cavalcade will honor the memory and the music of Victor Herbert. When you visit the World's Fair, don't fail to visit the DuPont exhibit. There you will see firsthand many of the wonders of chemistry. The orchestra and the original musical effects on the Cavalcade of America are under the direction of Don Vuri. This is Basil Risedale sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company.